So did your mum get you that for your birthday? Yes. Did she tell you how to wear it in a video? Yes. Are you happy about it? No. If the words Lion Tamer don't immediately conjure up the image of a granite-chested slab of chiselled man meat spotting a moustache that could strangle a hydra in your mind, you probably read the wrong kind of books as a kid. Weirdly though, the first Lion Tamer in recorded history was kind of an asshole. As noted in the introduction, when you hear the words Lion Tamer, you probably think of an image like this. That image is literally the first thing that pops up on Google when you type in Lion Tamer. That thing is the cure for erectile dysfunction in image form. If you told me that image had been shotgunned into the side of a mountain using bullets coated in bull shark semen, I would tell you that that is absolutely true and then punch you in the face because of how pumped up I was. Everything about that image is fucking awesome. The fact his cape is a still living lion, or the fact he's wearing a dress because his obviously normal trousers cannot contain his pendulous lead line ball sack. You're very worked up about that image, are you, Carl? It's really, I love that image. He's wearing a lion cape. His cape is just a living lion that's just resting on his shoulders so his shoulders don't get cold. The thing I love about this dude is that he's mid lion attack. There is a lion literally leaping onto his shoulders to bite at his throat and his first and only concern is how much of a baller he looks like. <laughs> you cannot, oh my God, that image is amazing. So is this the badass that we're talking about today? No, we're talking about this guy who looks less like he could tear your ribs out and stab your eyes out with him and more like a child molester condemned to the most fitting death in history. So who's that absolute loser on the left then? Well, this dipshit, that is Isaac A. Van Amberg, one of the first recorded animal trainers in history. If you're thinking we've like cherry picked like a really bad image of him that makes him look stupid, um, that's a promotional image he put out showing off how awesome he is. I don't get how that dude looks like the biggest pussy in the room, surrounded by lions and tigers. Oh. In addition to being a well-respected circus trainer, Amberg was also a fearless lion trainer, supposedly one of the first in recorded history. So how did that guy command the respect of the mighty lion? Um, well, to put it bluntly, um, he beat respect into his lions and tigers. Lovely. Yeah. It's going to be one of those videos, guys. Uh, I, don't, I understand if you want to turn it off now. <laughs> Strap in. Strap in, folks. It doesn't get any better. You're joking, right? So what technique did he use to train these lions? Well, Amberg developed this like sophisticated way of training lions called beating them with crowbars until they gave up and submitted. And um, basically just did that to like every large cat that he came across until they were meek enough that they'd get down on all fours and lick his feet. It's not true. Tell me it's not true. It's true. So what you've got to bear in mind, this is like the 1800s. It's not like unheard of to be yeah, a bit like cruel back there. People didn't treat like people with the proper respect back then if they were the wrong colour. So I should mention that Amberg's methods were so brutal, even by the sensibilities of like people back then, that they complained. Well, people in the 1800s complained yes, he was about too it, hard. He was too harsh to animals. Something, Holy that shit. something people back then saw as little more than entertainment. Like this is an era where if you went to the London Zoo, and um, if you like the entry to go see, like the entry to a zoo was a dog or a cat, which they then feed to the lions. Um, that's how little regard people had for the welfare of animals back then. And this dude was harsh enough to them that people said, "Come on, man, like, don't be like that. Don't be that. Don't guy. be that guy. Come on, it's only a lion." So what was his show then? Like, how did he perform with these lions? One of the first things he'd do is he'd like trot out his lion or his tiger or another similar big cat. And he'd tell people like, oh, this is the king of the jungle. Like, observe its power. Now observe the command I have over this animal. And he'd make it go down on all fours, lick his feet, and then open its mouth and he'd put his head inside. That is quite a popular trick amongst tamers. Yes, and he was the first person to do it. So like, whenever you've seen like videos of like, people putting their heads inside like, the mouths of crocodiles or like similar large animals. Like he was the trendsetter, I guess, in that regard. So Carl, this is the part where you say, Brad, there's more to this story. Oh, like for example, I might say, oh, after years of mistreatment, one of his lions or tigers snapped. And during one stage show, while he was putting his head into the mouth of one of the creatures mistreated for so many years, it finally had enough and clamped its jaw shut and bit his fucking head off and he died horrifically. Yeah, come on, hit me with that. No, none of that happened. Um, he performed without incident for several decades, became a very wealthy man through mistreating these lions and tigers. 
Yeah, but there was a point later on in his career where he finally, finally got his comeuppance for what he'd done. Oh, you mean like finally an animal snapped and took a swipe at him and caused like a career-ending injury, which stopped him from having to enjoy his retirement? Yeah, and that didn't happen either. Like, he retired a rich man and died well-respected of old age. So you're saying he died respected? Yes, he died a very well-respected animal trainer and he's still considered one of the greatest animal trainers in history today. So there was a part where he turned over a new leaf and decided to like work towards you know good things in his old age? Oh, you mean like realised he was like an asshole to these lions and maybe showed like a modicum of remorse how poorly he treated them over the years and maybe you know, like, use some of his wealth to like help animals in his later life, you know, to like, you know, apologise in some way for how badly he treated animals as a younger man. No, he didn't do any of that. He never showed any remorse whatsoever and he died an asshole. Great. Yeah, thank you so much, Carl. For me, for me and all the fans for that really uplifting message you've just given us. Yeah, I know the story would have probably been better if it ended with, oh, and then a lion bit his head off. But unfortunately, no, life doesn't have happy endings all the time. The guy died rich and an asshole. Unfortunately, everyone at home, the world is full of dicks. So what would be your animal of choice to tame? What, if I worked in a zoo? Yeah. It would definitely be a giraffe. <laughs> Why a giraffe? Because, like, the, uh, the classical image of a lion tamer is like a guy with a chair, isn't it? Like, back Sheba, back, and then with a whip. Yeah. If it was a giraffe, you'd have to get like a really long stool <laughs> and then like just poke it at the giraffe's head with like a really, really long piece of string. Going, get back, get back. And there's no way you could ever pull that off. I just really like the image of someone trying to tell a giraffe what to do. Because giraffes are creatures that just look so nonchalant about everything, except when they start like slapping their necks about. Oh god, that's horrific. It's so terrifying. And they're like, oh, boy, oh, boy. try and find footage of it. Because it's terrifying. It looks like when you'd like you and your mates are having a joking lightsaber fight with um wrapping paper rolls. Oh, like PVC tubes yeah, and they're, like they're all that. flopping just around everywhere. Slapping the necks together, it's terrifying. <laughs> oh my god, imagine like riding a giraffe into combat. <laughs> it's like the front row of the army and you just tell the giraffe like do the manoeuvre and it lowers its head down and, and just sweeps it across like a tree trunk. Oh man, there's so much stuff you could train a giraffe to do, it'd be awesome. Like, oh man, if I'd make it wear a tie as well. <laughs> if you made a giraffe wear a tie, where would the tie go? Would it go up here or would it go all down here? It's like that question, isn't it? Like, if a dog wore trousers, how would it wear them? Would it wear them on the back legs or the front legs or all four legs at once? If a giraffe wore a necktie, where would the necktie go? If a giraffe wore a cape, like if you were a giraffe-themed superhero and it has to wear a cape and a mask to disguise its identity, where would the cape be attached to? Well, I'd assume it would be the bottom of the neck because obviously it's... It rests on your shoulders. Be, yeah. But at the same time, wouldn't that look ridiculous? We'll never know his secret identity. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny Giraffe walks into office. <laughs> I, heard, I heard the Giraffe Man was here. Yeah, Johnny, you missed it, mate. <laughs> like, it's weird how you're never in the same room, innit? Why are we now talking about a giraffe superhero? I don't know, I don't know. Johnny I'm Giraffe? I'm tired. I'm tired. Why is he called Johnny Giraffe and his superhero name is Giraffe Man? I don't know. It's been a long day, Brad. It's been a long rookie day making these videos. I've been called by the rookie. Oh. At least one positive thing came out of this video, Carl. At least we know how much you love your mummy. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs>